Hey, fun little video to start it off with, and um, really excited to be here today. It was a great morning, and gosh, Todd is a hard act to follow. I do have to say, I'm a California girl, somewhat earthy, but I've never tried putting we on my face to look younger, so, hmm. But I have done the thing where you breathe and someone tries to pull your stomach to see if you could pass out in my much younger days. So anyway, really excited to be here. I lead global ta talent acquisition for Autodesk. And Autodesk is a 3D design, engineering, and entertainment software and services company based in the Bay Area. So what our software does, it enables designers and engineers around the world to build everything, from, design everything from cars to bridges to buildings. Our software is used to create visual effects, so all of the movies nominated for best visual effects in the Academy Awards the last 18 years were all Autodesk software. Some of you may have heard of Avatar, Life of Pi, Lord of the Rings, King Kong, all Autodesk. So really cool company, fun place to work, and uh, we were recently rated one of the top 10 multinational companies to work for. So today what I'm going to talk about is building an internal recruiting structure and then also focus a little on kind of recruiting 5.0, some trends in recruiting and what's next. Starting with a stat here, only 24% of organizations have a defined global recruiting strategy. You know, a lot of companies still have very decentralized organizations. They may have HR folks working with agencies some places. They may have some internal recruiters, but they don't have a holistic strategy where they're managing their global talent pool, or even if they're not global, they still are doing it in bits and pieces. So is this surprising to any of you? Does this resonate? So when I came to Autodesk 10 years ago, we were doing 100% agency hire in EMEA and APAC. And in the Americas, it was about 50%. So really heavily relied on agencies. Again, it was mostly HR partners in EMEA and APAC, just working with local agencies, kind of doing their own thing, very disparate and, and no centralized strategy. So I looked at that, and I come from a search background, so I was looking at that and thinking, gosh, we are spending so much money on all these agency fees. Why don't we just hire internal recruiters and do it ourselves? That could really impact the bottom line. I mean, when you look at the cost per hire from an internal recruiter, that global average was three to 4,000. In an agency, if it's 20%, roughly, first year salary on $100,000, that's 20K. So that differential's huge. So what we did is built a business case. You know, how can we get buy-in to get internal recruiters to try to shift that ratio and save the company money and build up our own internal pipeline of talent? So the business case was easy. Just showed the numbers to the executives, said, hey, this is what we're spending. Here is how much an internal recruiter will cost. Can we get some internal funding to go hire them and build out the structure? They're like, cost savings? Look at this. No problem. Go do it. The hardest part was actually getting some people in place, and getting the managers to buy into this new structure. So what I would constantly hear from managers is, you know, I have this network of agencies already. You know, they had strong relationships with external partners. They didn't want to change that. They thought that only external agencies could provide the best talent, that they had their magic Rolodex of talent, and they were the only ones that could find people. And then also what I heard a lot in many markets is, you can't do direct sourcing here. It's unethical, it's illegal, you can't call other companies, you know, only the agencies can do that for us. We can't do that direct. So I, I listened very patiently. <laughs> and um, it's funny, I remember even one of our um, head executives in Germany was saying, you can't find people here. So to prepare for the meeting, I printed out a bunch of LinkedIn profiles came to him from all of our competitors. I said, look, it, I can get all these people in Germany. And he's like, wow. He's like, but we can't call them. That would be unethical. So again, I listened, and it was an evolution. It took a while to change. It didn't happen overnight. So we focused on some key markets and in hiring internal recruiters. So we started with like Singapore, China, Germany, and Canada, and then as well as build out our US team. Um, so we did get some recruiters on board, and again, managers will, were still using their agencies, and our internal team worked very hard to really understand the business requirements and, and get some, some candidates to them. And what really helped shift it was really just delivering results. Once our internal team started to show that they could find the same quality of talent, 
the managers would, would start to listen and we would show them how much money they were saving because at Autodesk, the, the agency fees came out of the manager's budget, whereas the internal recruiting budget was centralized, so they didn't have to pay for that. And really, a key to the success here was finding the right recruiters who could actually influence the business, find the talent, do that direct sourcing, and deliver the results. So I tried to look for people who came from an agency background, like I did, because I, I saw that a lot of people who had just done in-house roles in certain markets were used to just doing that posting, waiting for resumes to come in, and working with agencies and more processing versus understanding the business needs, going to network, find the talent, building pipelines, and being more kind of that aggressive hunter, sales person, recruiter. So that was something I would recommend if you're looking at doing this. And since then, I've built up a global team. So I have a team of about 60 people around the world. That includes recruiters, sourcers, coordinators, university recruiting, and mobile, uh, mobility, so relocation and immigration. So you can see they are all over. I have a big team in Singapore, China, some people in India. I have a recruiter in Melbourne. And um, what, what was key to getting this global structure in place is really also putting in global consistency around system, processes, and tools. So we put together a global hiring process from the get-go. We had managers, say, in Canada hiring in Singapore, managers in the U.S. hiring in China, managers in Australia hiring in Singapore. So what we wanted it to be is a really clear process of you know, roles and responsibilities so managers knew what to expect. And you know, that really helped. And we also leveraged global tools like our ATS, so everyone was working the same, and we had a centralized pool of candidates. And then you know, recently we, we rolled out LinkedIn Recruiter globally as our CRM. So everybody's working on the same field. We also rolled out a global university recruiting program, which is a key source of um, talent pipeline for us. And then we took our global relocation and immigration and centralized that as well. So it's managed consistently across the globe. And that has really helped and managers have you know, seen the increased efficiencies from the process and it's, been, it's worked really well. Some opportunities we still have. Japan and Korea are still very heavily agency driven. So I hear, you know, we don't have a recruiter in Japan or Korea right now. We have people around the region trying to support those markets. But again, the managers there are resistant to change. They say, you know, only candidates will be approached by agencies here. They won't listen to internal recruiters. We have to do it this way. And I listen, but I tend to disagree. So I'm in the case of building a business case to get a recruiter there because we're still spending a lot of money there. And I've talked to some of my peers and they have actually put internal recruiters there and although they haven't reduced agency spend 100%, they brought it down significantly, maybe even 50 to 60%, which results in significant cost savings. So. And here's a snapshot just so you get a sense of this is just the past three years, but the agency hires globally so we've been at 4% average globally. It's our global average, which is pretty good. I mean, that really impacts the company's bottom line. And here's a snap, snapshot for APAC the past three years. So you can see last year it was at 10% agency hire. And most of that, again, is Japan and Korea or some country heads. We did go out to executive search for those positions. But still, pretty, pretty staggering numbers considering we were at 100% you know, when I joined Autodesk. And this is just a snapshot last year by GEO, so you can see how APAC compares to the other two. So we did less than 1% hiring in the Americas via external search last year. And EMEA was at 3%. And we used to do a little more in EMEA, but I just put a recruiter in Moscow about a year ago that's really helped with emerging markets in EMEA and with Moscow. So that's really brought down our agency right there. So results, pretty clear, the cost savings is huge. We've saved Autodesk millions of dollars over the years by building up this internal recruiting structure. We've reduced time to fill by an average of 25% by having these clearly defined processes and the internal recruiters who know the business, they can sell the company, they know what the manager wants. 
We've built up our internal database of talent, and we've built pipelines. So again, we leverage LinkedIn a lot, and now LinkedIn Recruiter to keep track of people. So even if they're not looking today, we're you know, engaging with them and keeping them in the pipeline for the future. So we can also segment by different talent pools and market to different people and segments on what may be interesting to them to keep them engaged with Autodesk and the brand. We've also improved candidate and manager experience. Agencies will say, oh yeah, we'll take care of your candidates, but they don't have that invested interest like a, full, a regular in-house recruiter. You know, as you know, candidate experience in-house is key. You want to make sure a, the person has a good experience, even if we're not going to hire them. So they go tell other people about your company, or they may be a candidate for a future position. So you want to make sure that candidate experience is, goes really well. And then manager experience, like I said, the internal recruiters build partnerships with the business so they get to understand the strategy, what's coming on the horizon, and they can be more proactive in building those talent pools and, and delivering. So overall, just a direct impact on business, saving the company a lot of money, and it really elevates the strategic nature of talent acquisition within an organization. So what's next for Autodesk? What am I doing now? So we recently um, decided to make a, a change in our structure. So we were very geo-based. So I'd had a EMEA manager, APAC, and Americas, and I'm moving it to more of a functional global model. So I'm going to have a head of sales recruiting globally and a head of product engineering recruiting globally. So the recruiters will still sit in the different countries, but this way the senior leaders can be aligned with the business, really understand that strategy, and develop and execute recruiting and sourcing strategies globally and be accountable for that. And then also just managing those talent pools globally versus in silos. So we're in the process of hiring the head of sales. Once that person gets in place, we'll make the change. So I'm sure I'll have a lot of key learnings from this, and maybe I can come back and tell you about that next year. <laughs> uh, we also, you know, employment branding is key for Autodesk, and we've had multiple people kind of with their hands in the pie, and we're hiring a dedicated head of global branding, um, branding and marketing, and that person will be starting soon who can really own that and drive that. So again, this new structure, I think it will help us align even more closely to the business and be a more valued strategic partner. So I'm looking forward to it, and I think we've come a long way, and I know many of you are just starting your journey here, so I'm happy to you know, always talk to people if they have questions. I know some people are further along, and some people may be where Autodesk is or surpassed, so I, I might want to learn from you if you've gone to the global functional model too. So you can grab me or ping me on LinkedIn. So this is just a stat. The third quarter revenue for search fell 9.7% last year. So I think tools like LinkedIn have dramatically changed the game and impacted their business. It's funny because when I talk to a lot of my search friends and say, okay, what are you doing now? They're all using LinkedIn. That's where they're finding their talent. So we're all fishing from the same pool. So maybe when they go in to sell your company on their services, they sell that magic Rolodex they have that we don't have. It's all the same. We all know that, right, as recruiters? So I think search firms are going to have to, you know, there'll still be a need for them in some capacity, but they're going to have to really expand and differentiate their services to remain competitive. I know Corn Ferry bought PDI Ninth House a couple years ago. So it's a leadership assessment development. So they're starting to expand their services. So I will, uh, I imagine other firms will do that as well. So it'll be interesting to watch that industry and see what happens. All right, so I wanted to also touch on kind of some future trends in recruiting. Some are already here, some are coming, and some may never come, but kind of fun to talk about. The first, goodbye resumes. So I'm already seeing this. Candidates are just sending you their LinkedIn profile. They're not sending you resumes, cover letters, and I think this will gradually shift and resumes will go away. I mean, LinkedIn is a dynamic profile, so even candidates that are passive and aren't looking, they're keeping that updated. Whereas you only update your resume when you actually go to start to look. We don't want all those active candidates. So I think we'll see this trend that resumes will just ultimately go by the wayside. Also, death of the ATS. 
So right now, a lot of recruiters are working in tools like LinkedIn on the front end or doing Boolean Google searches to get their candidates. And then you have the middle ATS, and then you have the back end HRAS processing system. So it becomes cumbersome for recruiters. So I would love to see, hopefully soon, just to have two systems, the front end where you're doing all your sourcing and CRM candidate management, and then just the back end HRIS system to process the offer approvals, et cetera. That would just streamline the process and really help recruiters, because I hear that a lot from them. They get bogged down by process in the ATS. Big data, big impact. I mean, it's incredible that the amount of data we have available to us as recruiters or just in our daily lives. There's so much information out there, and it's just, I know we have been, become much more data-driven in our decision-making around sourcing, looking at different talent pools, markets. We can inform the business. If they're looking to open a development center somewhere, we can get some analytics and say, hmm, talent pool's not so big here. Why don't you try here? There's a great pool. So I think it's really exciting, and it, again, it makes us much more strategic, and I think we'll see some data analytics people being hired internally for recruiting structures um, in the near future. It's an important role and will continue to grow. Data footprints in the cloud. So this is somewhat controversial. Uh, candidates, you know, we can track where people have been, what they like, their behavior online. So I think going forward, this could be something we could see that people are using to make hiring decisions. It could be seen as very unethical. And I want to say on the record, Autodesk is not doing this or using this data. <laughs> but I do think it could become a trend. There's already, already um, tweet psych. I don't know if you're familiar with that, where they can analyze people's tweets and content and kind of give you a summary of what their behavior or traits may be like. So again, we're not leveraging that. But it will be interesting to see how this plays into the future of recruiting. Personalization, you know, people are used to getting things served up to them. I know, you know if you're on Amazon, they might recommend, you know, here you may like this based upon your behavior over here, or what you viewed. And you know, LinkedIn has that with LinkedIn jobs. So this trend will continue and recruiters will need to be more personalized in the way they're reaching out to candidates as well in different pools and customize their marketing messages. Mobile is continuing to explode, so I know mo many recruiting, com recruiting organizations are already doing a lot around mobile, but that's where our candidates are. They're on this, their smartphones, so we need to figure out how to continue to engage with them on their smartphones, make it easy for them to apply via mobile. Gamification. What was that game Todd was talking about? Like, forgot the name of it, but you know, people really want to be social. They're competitive. They want to get in there and um, so how do we apply the principles of gaming to recruiting? I think it's an important element. An example could be a leaderboard for employee referrals. How do you drive employee referrals by getting your employees to be competitive and showing who the leaders are, who hired the most people? So I think gamification will continue to play into recruiting, and I'm excited to see what some companies are doing here. I think I've heard a lot of great ideas. So, Facial recognition. So, you know, facial recognition software is out there. So imagine being at a bar, going up to someone and putting your phone up and getting their LinkedIn profile on your phone. Sounds kind of creepy, right? But if you think about it, if people have their, I don't know if anyone has Shazam, that app on your iPhone, you hear a song, you put it up, it tells you what song it is. So, you know, I don't think this is far along where people just take your picture and get a bunch of data on you. It's kind of creepy, though. Hopefully they have some privacy sensors or something where you can block that. Candidate auctions. So people are starting to put themselves up for auction. There's a thing called developer auction in San Francisco and New York. So some people are sick of getting hounded by recruiters. So they are just putting themselves up for auction to see, I'll go to the highest bidder. So I don't think it's the greatest model, but it'll be interesting to see if it takes off and how it impacts salaries in certain markets. Internal talent pools. So many of us know who our internal talent pools are. You know, what are the skill sets in our organization so we can develop workforce plans, succession plans. But what a lot of companies aren't doing is how are we getting our recruiters to actively recruit our internal talent? Again, even at Autodesk, that's somewhat controversial. Like, we only can have people apply, but we can't go target them. Like, that would be bad. 
But if you think about it, external recruiters are out there targeting our people right now. So if they're ready to make a move, why aren't we giving them the same opportunities but internally so we get to retain them? So I think we'll start seeing recruiting organizations developing processes and policies around this. Will we need recruiters? See some scared faces out there. Of course we will need recruiters, but it will be interesting to see how our role evolves internally. I know some of our hiring managers who are on places like LinkedIn, they're out there finding candidates on their own, which is great. They're leveraging their networks. I think it's awesome. But sometimes they're finding candidates and they don't communicate with the internal recruiter and it can get a little confusing. So how do we work together to leverage their networks and partner with them to fill the recs? Employees as brand ambassadors. So it's interesting. I hear a lot of time from Autodesk employees who are at these conferences talking about what our technology does, what we're doing. And I always say, did you kind of put a plug in for how great it is to work here? Like, oh, I didn't think of that. So how can we get employees thinking about being brand ambassadors for the company as a place to work? I know we have over 7,000 people who have Autodesk as their current employer on LinkedIn. Gosh, that's free real marketing space. I'm, trying, I'm doing a campaign to get our employees to update their profiles to kind of highlight some of the cool things we're doing right now as a company, putting that we're one of the best places to work. How do we get them to leverage that space? Because when candidates come to interview, they go check out the LinkedIn profiles of the people they're interviewing with. So if it's really boring, you're missing the opportunity to get people engaged before they even come in. So. And back to the basics. So with all these great tools we have, I think some recruiters tend to get lazy. They can start just spamming people in mails. But it's really about getting back to the basics of recruiting. We're really sales and marketing professionals. So when we're writing these emails, how are you engaging with people? You know, what, what are their hot buttons? What will make them want to respond to you? Also, just you know, following up with a phone call, that good old just networking relationship building we need to do versus just spamming. It's about being more strategic, building that Rolodex with the tools and information we have online, and making those marketing decisions based on analytics, too. So some key takeaways from today. Internal recruiting structure, huge ROI and increased value to the business. I encourage you all to try to build a business case and go that way. And don't stop when they say, no, it won't work. Just, just keep going. So innovate, challenge the status quo, and take risks. So I think a lot of people can get complacent, but there's so much more to do. I know every time I get to a point where I'm like, OK, now we have this structure. What can we do next? What can we do next? Continue to evolve and take it to the next level. So deliver the talent, change the game. That's our vision for talent acquisition at Autodesk. So it just gives us that line of sight. A company's success depends on the quality of talent they have. So our jobs are super important as recruiters. If you can deliver the talent, you can change the game for your company. And finally, I just wanted to say happy 10th birthday to LinkedIn. I've been a fan forever. When it first came out, I remember thinking, this is too good to be true. So I just started printing off all the profiles of people thinking, they're going to get off of here soon if they're on to me that I can find them. So I killed a lot of trees, and I still have file cabinets with all these LinkedIn profiles printed off. And I'm glad to say that it's actually gone the other way. So it's, I think it's really transformed recruiting. And um, I'm a huge fan. So thanks for the opportunity to present to you all today.